Hello all Interest TV viewers. Ken Power reported its third quarter earnings this week and I have the opportunity to discuss the results with company CEO Tomi Ristimäki. Hello Tomi. Hello Pauli. So Ken Power's third quarter revenue declined uh, significantly year on year and and also slightly compared to the second quarter. So what were the key reasons behind this development? I think the comparing to Q2 and, and the declining was not that big. So this is basically when we look at that our our let's say big orders are almost like 10% of the of the revenue. So single order moving can cause these small variations a couple of orders moving. So that's that I, I wouldn't look at like statistically very high on on there. And uh, but uh, in in last year, I think the big difference is of course the market situation. What we see with the inventory levels in the key customers. I also read from the new from the let's say social media that of course you have to replace it by new customers, but which we have been doing, and that's why the result is 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 where it is. But of course missing our long term bigger customers in there because of the inventory situation which is, by the way, affecting the whole DC charging industry. And uh, this is not only completely Ken Power thing, so, but it's affecting basically the whole charging industry. So this is the main, main, main point there. And you had also some production ramp up related uh, things going on in third quarter, right? Yeah, third quarter. I, I think there was still some uh, delays that we couldn't produce everything. So that affected the revenue still a bit but now we have also been able to tell that now the ramp up time is over and we are in full production with the new production new products to them exactly yeah so um looking to the order index there was uh, some decline uh, also how long would you expect the customers high inventory levels to uh, keep uh, slowing down the orders looking at the uh, analyze and the uh how the inventory has changed we expect it to it to last the first half of 25 first half but but yeah. uh um definitely our new customers kind of yes are, this is kind of the offset. kind of the yeah. effect of the new customers that they dilute the effect that when you have customers especially are coming new to the charging market with big plans they don't have any stock and of course, the visibility of, of ours is towards our own products in the, in, in the stock. So we don't, of course, see the competitors' uh, equipment in the, in, the, in the warehouses. But analyzing the uh, installation speed of the car, how, how fast it's going, and then estimating because we have a full visibility on when the products come online in the system. Yes. So if you take a look to the next year's uh, uh, market situation and your your own outlook. What do you see the most important growth drivers for Ken Power in twenty five? I think it's uh, it's it's basically the amount of vehicles is still growing, and and what we analyze also is the kind of relation of how good the charging network is uh, compared to the amount of electric vehicles in the market. There is a big gap in certain countries. If we look at the major countries in Europe. The situation is nowhere near to the level we have in Finland today, which is, by the way, the, the, the best ratio. I, I think we are talking about below 20, close to 10 already in Finland, that the network is so strong that there shouldn't be any doubts on can the, can the charging network service the, the amount of vehicles. But in, in many countries, the electric vehicle amounts are still growing fast and the gap could be bigger. We have double-digit electric vehicle growth countries in Europe. If you look at UK, France, registration in the first half was more than 10%. Uh, I mean, in Greece, and, and we have countries like Denmark with plus 50%. So this, this is not the same situation as we have in Finland. And it feels sometimes looking at Finnish situation, which is the slowest on EV sales in, 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 in the whole Europe. And then we, maybe we get from the home market a wrong uh, understanding mm. on how the how the generally the whole market is developed. I understand. Uh, then looking to your uh, customer base, could you describe how that has developed over the past one to two years? And is there, for example, more diversification or geographical diversification? And and uh, I would say 
we've seen the same similar tendencies in other countries compared to Finland that also the retail players are taking in a more active role in the charging industry. And definitely the amount of questions coming to the truck charging networks and, and comparing that to the plans of truck manufacturing OEMs. These are actually picking up very fast. It's not huge market in, in a way, but the growth potential. And if the charting network must meet uh, the truck manufacturer's plan on introducing the way vehicles, it has to pick up fast to actually being able to service them. Okay. Uh, do you think the timeline we are talking about a couple of years when that could become actually very much that, that, that is you. more relevant in a couple of years of course the big numbers what we are seeing it's 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 companies are even saying 50 percent of their sales globally will be battery electric vehicles and talking about year 2030 and that's only five years from now so it it, it is actually very fast growth and very fast growth targets uh, in the vehicle side and that actually tells you the demand difference in truck charts in compared to the personal car charging that normally the personal car charging is driven by the amount of vehicles. Truck sales do not happen if the charging network is, is not in place. So actually investments are coming earlier than, than the huge amount of vehicles. So that's also the difference between the two, two markets. Well, then about the, the passenger EV sales, there's been a lot of discussion about EU's stricter, more strict emission limits for the newly sold cars being effective by, by next year. And this could significantly increase the share of the EVs about newly sold cars. So what do you think that your customers, the charging operators, think about this? Do you think that they actually want to see it, this, this uh, actually happening, that, that the EV sales rates increase or... or like like before they have courage to increase investment or I, I think this will support the idea of course when when you have increased number of electric vehicles then the demand is higher because because people selling electricity when you have a bigger customer base it's the same logic as as, as ours that this will this will affect uh, and actually affect the need to speed up because you have the opportunity. And if you are not taking the opportunity, somebody else will take the opportunity. So growing the networks along with the, with the increased number of, of, of vehicles, of course, is, is a key when you want to do successful charging business as a, as a charge point operator. But is there any skepticism about these EU uh, limits that do they actually take place and Oh, I think we have discussed, I don't like sticks, that I, I like more carrots, where when you look at the subsidy things, and, and, and must is never a good good method. Um, this is a little bit, from the personal op opinion, of course, the stick is not a good tool. Uh, it's, I like the supporting of actually, uh, like acquisition of electric vehicles, because that's actually the best boost in the industry. You can do but of course, these uh, kind of stick methods help as well if, if nothing happens. But that's not good mentality. I, I think it's especially for the consumer market. People do not like being told what you need to do. Yeah. Uh, and uh, actually, when you look at the, the monetary point of view, the bigger impact, and I, I see truck charging actually going forward, whatever happens, is there's so clear benefits on, on like the total cost of ownership of the operations. You're running a business and you are affecting very greatly into the biggest cost of running logistic business, which is the energy. And, and this is actually something that it's so clear economical benefits in there that it makes it kind of interesting because this is... This is uh, more business decision than feeling. Yeah. Uh, then about the sales margin, uh, it's remained actually pretty strong in third quarter for you and, and improved compared to the first half of this year. So should we conclude from this that the, uh, you, you haven't at least yet started lowering your prices at least materially and, and uh, even though we could could see some price erosion in in increased competition uh, in the market that hasn't yeah, happened yet. But really, reality is that there is short term price erosion and more more price competition when you have limited amount of, of, of 
projects out there. Situation is different from last year where everybody had room to play. So I, I would say that, but I don't see that as a like material effect in there that, but of course we are also taking more aggressive position in, in, in individual pricing in short term because you want to to win the deals for what are out there. And you have a st strong starting point when it comes yeah, to Yeah, I think the, when you have a margin is in a good shape, then you have actually the room to play in this this industry compared to the companies who don't have strong margin to start. Yes. Then uh, finally, regarding the competitive situation, have you seen any material changes in, in your uh, markets with some players winning more market shares or, or some important players pulling back? I think it's an overall... There is not huge changes in there, but the huge changes are coming more or less these companies who have uh, ceased to exist on the market. Uh, we have a company, Tritium, is now that there was some acquisition that their uh, North American factory was bought by an Indian company. But uh, it also means that it will take time that uh, if, they, if they can bring that back. So, of course, you have gaps in the market when Tritium or EV Box or in, in North America, free wire out, out from the market. So those are more, more dramatic changes on the market that will then open the door for others to expand their market share. So the playoffs have, have begun and you are still strong in play. I, I think it's telling a good story. We have a strong margin. Uh, Business, if you look at a little bit longer perspective than uh, last year to this year, I, I think that's a... I think we will be popping up champagne if the 23 wouldn't have been that high. If you compare to 22, it's it's more than double to that. So I, I think Kempo is in good position, good liquidity, uh, strong margins, uh, still sizable business, and it's it's not let's say dramatic the situation for us when you're comparing the companies who were having very weak margins, very weak financing, and then when a difficult market happens, those companies suffer. Yes. Thank you, Tommy, and, and uh, good luck for the rest of the year. Thank you, Pauli.